The Black Square by Russian artist Kazmir Malevich is a really big deal in art history. The history of Soviet painting, the history of contemporary abstraction, all of these things are bursting out of this tiny canvas. It's a mesmerizing. <laughs> wow! Can you believe somebody paid $20 million for that black square? Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today we're going to take a look at a black square and a couple of other items that I guarantee you aren't going to cost you $20 million. So this is my first official video in the new shop, so please excuse the mess as I haven't put everything together yet. But regardless of the state of my shop, we need to talk about a tool brand that I've recently fallen in love with over the last few months. You see, I'm unapologetically a woodpeckers fan, and I love almost everything about these tools. I love the precision, I love the accuracy, and I love the fact that they're American made. There's a woodpecker on your head. Yeah, he comes and goes. But there is one thing about these tools that I don't like, and that's the price. Every single one of these tools I've purchased myself, and every single time I check out on woodpeckers.com, I almost instantly have buyer's remorse. Now once I get the tool and realize how much I use it, that remorse seems to fade away, but I still carry a resentment for how much I spent on a simple piece of metal. Now I understand there's a lot that goes into making these tools, including a lot of very expensive machinery as well as high-end U.S. labor. <laughs> but it still doesn't help the fact that at this price point, this tool is out of reach of most average woodworkers. And that's why we're going to take a look at the brand we're taking a look at today. So what is this brand? Well, you've seen it on this channel before, but I've been so impressed with this tool company that I purchased three new items to check out some of their other offerings. So let's not waste any more time and check out these tools. So this brand is called Wood Rafik. It feels like they forgot to add a G in their name. If we take a look on the right hand side, you'll see the two tools that I've already purchased from this brand and been really impressed with. Over here on the right are the three new tools that we're going to take a look at. Now just to clarify, I'm not sponsored by Wood Rafik and I've purchased all these tools myself. Now I know I do a lot of tool reviews, but I've never received a dime from any tool that I've taken a look at. How much money is in your bank account? Zero dollars. Before we dig into the three new tools, let's rehash some of the reasons why I've really enjoyed using these two items that I currently have from Wood Graphic. The first tool that I ever got from Wood Graphic is the M12, and this is a 12 inch precision square. Now I'm a huge fan of the Woodpeckers 642, and I wanted to get a Woodpeckers 1282. The problem is that Woodpeckers is $180. Expensive. However, the M12 comes in at $90. And if I'm doing my math right, that's half the price. Yeah, that checks out. Now the reason that I like this square so much is it's very similar to my favorite square, the 642, only it's a little bit longer. It's got a 12 inch span and it's got little scribe holes at every 16th of an inch. Now it also has something that I love to see in a good woodworking square, and that's a lip. And it's this lip which gives you support as you rest it up against the edge of your workpiece. This makes scribing lines a breeze once you place your pencil into those scribe holes. Now is this square precise, accurate, and square? Well the answer is yes. This has been the only square I've been using for the last two months and I would compare this square to the 642. Which is this little guy that costs about $100 and takes about eight weeks to get because it's on back order. Now the next question you may be asking is where are these tools made? Well, they're not made in China. They're actually made in Korea. You've gotta be kidding me. Now I know a lot of you are sensitive as to where a tool is manufactured, and I totally get it, but for this video we're looking for alternatives for the beginning woodworker that won't break the bank. But regardless of where this tool is made, I've been really impressed with this tool since I first got it, and that's why I chose to purchase another item from Wood Graphic that I'd never seen before. And this crazy looking contraption is called the Wood Graphic Multi-Gauge. Let me show you what this tool can do. So as the name implies, this tool has a lot of functions, but there's a couple that I use the most. Let's take a closer look at this tool. So if we take a look at the tool, you can see there's a zero point right at the top, and this is what we'll reference. There's also a sliding ruler that you can move back and forth and lock into place with a little knob on the side. With your measurement locked into place, this is where this tool has become probably my best marking gauge. 
And that's because this tool now has a four inch lip to rest up right against the edge of your workpiece. But even better than that, it's got a four inch ruler where you can scribe your lines without having to stick your pencil into one of those tiny little holes. So you can say goodbye to breaking your pencil lead every single time you try to stick it into one of those other marking tools, tiny little holes. Bye bye you're very heavy. You'll also notice a secondary lip right at 45 degrees. You can use this to rest up against your workpiece to create those perfect 45 degree angles. And the last feature that I really like about this tool is your ability to use it as a depth gauge. By using that four inch ruler and the reference point that we used earlier, you can see that this workpiece is just a little bit over an inch. So as you can see, there's a lot of versatility with this tool and I've only scratched the surface. In fact, I use this a lot to set up the depth of my table saw blade. And that's because as you can see here with that four inch ruler, you can reference a lot more of your tabletop to get your blade height exactly where you need it. So as you can tell, I've been really pleased with all the items I've purchased from Wood Graphic so far, and that's given me the confidence to purchase three more items. So let's start to take a look at the new items I just got. So the first item I purchased is the Wood Graphic 4 inch precision square. Let's unbox this and I'll show you what it's all about. So just like with all wood graphic tools, the packaging is extremely nice. You can see the four inch square along with the mechanical pencil. So first off, the mechanical pencil is a Pentel, and this is one of the best mechanical pencil brands I've ever worked with. So why did I get this square? Well, the answer is simple. It's all about the size. So I've done quite a bit of digging and the smallest precision squares that I've found are right around six inches, but the wood graphic is at four inches. Now, if you're not extremely familiar with how big four inches is like me, this is how big it is in the palm of my hand. Now, one of the main reasons I got this tool is I've come to find most of my measurements are between one and three inches. And this tool makes it extremely easy to make those markings right on the fly. And this smaller tool is built in exactly the same fashion as the M12, which I've been so impressed with. And just like the M12, the M4 has scribing holes at every 16th of an inch. But as a precaution, since this is a new square, I want to test it out to make sure it's actually square. So I'll use the lip and rest it up against the edge of the workpiece, flip the square over and make sure that we only see one line. And as to be expected, this square is dead square. Now, since it is only four inches long, there's less of a chance of a variance, but this thing is dead square right out of the box. So I'd say that makes us dead square. But as I said in the beginning, the most important part of this square is its size. It's small enough to fit in your shop apron or even your pants pocket. And personally, I think this little guy is gonna give my trusty Woodpecker 642 a run for its money. Well, that covers our first new wood graphic item. Before we move on to our second, I ask you to do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Only about 11% of you that actually watch my videos are actually subscribed. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, just like with all my videos, I'm gonna leave links in the description below. So if you're interested in any of these tools, you can go check them out in the links below. Now let's give a look to our second new wood graphic item. So our next wood graphic item is the magnetic saw and chisel guide. Let's unbox this and see what it's all about. So inside this box, we're gonna get a very simple tool. This is the wood graphic magnetic saw and chisel guide. What does that device do? Well, that's a great question. Let's take a closer look at some of its physical components. If we take a look at the tool itself, you can see it resembles an angle iron. However, this has got a couple more features than your average angle iron. If we look at the broad side, there's a rubber on the back that gives it a grip once you press it up against your wood. Next up, you'll see there's three magnets here that allow it to grip your saw when you're making your cuts. Before we take a look at a couple of the functions of this tool, let's make sure it's perfectly square. And there's two main surfaces that I wanna check for square. First is the smaller edge, and secondly, the larger edge. 
and I saw no daylight between the square and the tool. So I think we're good to move forward. Let's get it. So now let's talk about how this tool is designed and why one edge is longer than the other. So I already mentioned that this has got a rubber pad on the broad side. This gives it a little bit of grip once you place it on your wood. Now the reason that this edge is so long is so that you can put a couple of clamps on your piece to hold it in place. Once you have your clamps in place, it's now time to address the magnets. These are made to hold your saw in place as you're making a cut across the board. Now, unfortunately, because my tools are in storage, because of the shop renovation, all I have available to me is this flush trim saw. But when I take the saw and place it close to the tool, it will pull that saw directly against the edge. Then I can begin to make my cut, knowing that my saw will be pulled towards the edge of my tool. Once my tool's in line, I can begin to make my cuts. Now obviously this tool will work a lot better with a larger saw, like a Japanese pull saw. However, I was able to get some pretty good results with this smaller saw. It may be a little bit difficult to see on camera, but my cut is completely flush with this saw guide. And that's exactly what you're looking for if you're using a saw guide to make your cuts with a handsaw. But frankly, that's not why I purchased this tool. I would much rather use a miter saw or a table saw to make that cross cut. The reason I purchased this tool is the ability to use chisels with it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Hand cut mortise and tenon joints. So here I've got a very rough mortise cut out and I can use this tool in the same fashion by lining it up with the edge of that mortise, taking a chisel and cleaning up that mortise. So in the same fashion, I'll take my saw guide and line it up with the edge of that mortise. And I wanna make sure that a magnet is right where the edge of that mortise is. Then I can take my clamps and lock down my saw guide into place. Once I have everything in alignment, I then can take my chisel and use that magnet to guide my chisel. Now my mortise is still pretty rough, but that's not the tool's fault, it's my fault. I've only created a handful of mortises in my life and that's exactly why I got this tool. And to give you an idea of the strength of these magnets, you can hold up the entire tool with just one magnet. So if you're interested in getting into hand tool and chisel work like I am, this may be the perfect tool for you. Speaking of hand tool work, let's take a look at our final item that I got from Wood Raffic. So the next item we're gonna take a look at is the one to eight dovetail guide. Let's open this up and see how it works. So as I said before, hand tool woodworking is something that I'm trying to get into. And this little jig should help me build my skills and hand cut dovetails. This little tool will assist me in cutting both pins and tails. Since I've never hand cut dovetails in my life, I'm not gonna act like I know what I'm doing. He doesn't know what he's doing. But I will show you how this tool is supposed to work to cut both pins and tails. Let's start off with the tails. Before we actually cut those tails, let's take a look at the physical construction of this tool. As you can see, there's some rubber padding on each side of the tool. There's also some rubber padding on the very bottom. If we look at the side of the tool, there's a magnet on this side as well as this side. And that's what's going to be used to guide your saw as you're making your cut. So let's say we want to cut out this tail right here. In order to do that, we simply rest our tool right up against the edge of that tail. Then we can take our saw and rest it right up against that magnet. Once everything's aligned, we can begin to make our cut. And once again, I apologize, but I'm going to have to use this flush trim saw as it's the only saw I have available. Once we have one side of the tail cut out, we then can move our tool to the other side of the tail and begin to make our cuts on the other side. Now this is by no means perfect at all, and you can even see I did a little bit of an overcut, but for a first time hand cut tail, this is pretty good in my opinion. So now that we've seen this little tool can do a tail, let's take a look at how it does pins. So in order to create a pin, you simply take the tool and rotate it 90 degrees. Then you can take your saw blade, place it right up against the tool and begin your cuts. Once you have the first cut made, you can remove your saw, move the tool over to the next marking and begin your second cut.
And if we take a look at the top view, you can see the angled top along with the straight edges on the side. And this is exactly what we're looking for in pins. Now, obviously I have very little, if any experience on hand cutting dovetails, but I'm hoping this tool will give me just a little bit of confidence so that I can work on this skill. Confidence is very sexy. And if the one to eight ratio isn't the ratio that you're looking for in your dovetails, this tool comes in a variety of different angles so that you can get exactly what you want. There's only one shape of dovetail. It is the dovetail shape. <laughs> Well, that wraps up our last wood graphic tool. I've been really impressed with every single tool I've purchased from wood graphic, and I anticipate that I'll probably be purchasing a lot more of these tools in the future. This tool is a great alternative to some of the more expensive brands like Woodpeckers and Sterrett. And although not American made, these tools really do have a quality feel to them that reminds me of a lot of similar American made products. Well, thanks for joining me today on checking out these wood graphic tools. I really enjoyed showing you these new tools that I just purchased and I expect I'll probably have a few more in the future. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. Until next time, take care as always.